Hey guys, it's Dave the Software Dev again, and this is going to be my second uh, Knockout JS video. And I was driving from home, home from work today, and I was thinking about what I wanted to do, and I said, well, why not do the game of life uh, with Knockout? And I should mention to you that that is a terrible use for Knockout JS, but I thought it would be fun. Uh, so let's do it anyway, you know. Uh, simulates life and death, given a few rules. And each, each one of these little blocks is a cell in the simulation. And uh, each uh, step of the simulation, these four rules are applied such that any, any live cell with fewer than two live neighbors will die. Any live cell with two or three live neighbors will live on. Any live cell with more than three neighbors live, alive will die and any dead cell with exactly three live neighbors becomes a live cell. And that when you implement these rules, you sort of get these cool little animations like this. So I'm going to start by creating a, uh, a model uh, because Knockout.js uses model to bind the UI. And again, I should mention, this is not what Knockout.js is made for. But um, So this will be horribly inefficient, but it'll be fun anyways. Um, so let's, let's go through this. Okay, so uh, I've created uh, the beginnings of my model to simulate our life simulation. Uh, keeping track of this object, I mentioned that in my first tutorial. And I'm also defining how many rule, rows and columns um, that are going to be included in my simulation because it is a grid after all of rows and columns, like a table. And I've got a single observable, which I call self.data. And this is going to be an array of arrays where each array within it will be um, basically uh, the cells themselves. So it'll look something like this. 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. That'll be the first you know, array. And then and put a comma there. And then it'll look like this. And each, this will be the grid that knockout js is going to render where a zero is a dead cell and a one is a live cell that's what's going to be stored within my data array and each one of these entries is also going to be an observable that way we can uh, iterate through them and, and update them uh, within knockout so uh, i've created a self.initialize function here where we uh, instantiate a y variable to loop through our rows and an x variable to loop through the columns and we create a new row as we're going through and we either add a 0 or 1 using the math.random to our current row row and then once we're done building that entire row so that would this would be you know that that we just built we then uh, push uh, or sorry we then push that onto our data observable uh, using uh, creating a ko.observable of the new row. Okay, so uh, let's actually have it display uh, what we've initialized. And I'm going to do that uh, via a terrible method, uh, but it will actually build the build the uh, the screen. Okay, so let's go over what I've done here. I've done a couple of things. Uh, the very first thing I did was back in my script here. There's our initialize function we just wrote. I instantiate uh, an instance of my model. And on the window.onload, or if you're using jQuery, you could use the, uh, you know, the document ready function there. Uh, I don't have jQuery included in this HTML file, so I'm using window.onload. I basically call the knockout.apply bindings uh, with my model. So that's pretty standard. You'll do that always when you're using knockout. Um, here, here is where the bad and inefficient, and this is not what Knockout is designed for, stuff comes into play. Um, but it's fun, and it works. Um, so I created a few styles here. Uh, on my body, I set the, the font to a, uh, a monospaced font, uh, Courier New or Courier or Monospace, whichever one the browser is capable of uh, offering up. I also set the line height to zero pixels so there's no space in between each individual line. Uh, 
and I have two styles here, alive and dead. If you're alive, then your background color is black and your text color is black. And if you're dead, then your background color is white and your text color is white. So to actually display the data, uh, I'm using one thing here that I, that I haven't mentioned to you before, but if you have used Knockout, you've probably seen. Uh, sometimes uh, you don't have really a good container tag available to you. So Knockout offers you the capability of actually using a comment to, um, to store you know, your container for like a for each, which is what I'm doing here. I have no idea how they implemented that. I would really love to dig through the code one day and look at that. But, uh, but you can actually use a comment in your HTML to, uh, to drive the, uh, the generation of your UI. And, you know, there's, there's arguments for and against that, I'm sure, but that's, that's available to you there. And that's what I'm using. So with this comment, you preface it with KO, and I'm going to loop through each data object. And remember, our data is, you know, something like this. It's an array of arrays, right? So for each one, I'm going to render a, a P tag, right, around that array data to uh, a paragraph, you know, so that it'll, sp it'll space between them. And then within each paragraph, I've got a for each going on for the data records, you know, that'll be within that record. So it'll loop, you know, through these three, for instance. And then for each one of those, it's, this is a nested for each. It's going to build a span with where the data binding is. If my CSS tag is, is this data a zero or one? I'm using a ternary operator here. If it's a zero, then you're going to get dead. If it's a one, then you're going to get alive. And the actual text that gets displayed is just an underscore. So let's save this and take a look at it. All right, let's open up our file. And there you have rendered out our game of life um, board, I guess you could call it, or grid. Uh, it's, it's not updating yet at all, but there it is. All right, so let's actually update our uh, game of life now. And what, all we have to do is run those four rules from Conway's game of life for each individual cell space. Okay. So, uh, again, I have never written a game of life algorithm before, um, so this is probably really inefficient, and people who know more about it, can, <laughs> they could probably do this in just a few lines of code. But uh, I'll explain what I'm doing here. I've written a, an, an update function, <clears throat> and the first thing that I do is I pull the value out of our data observable, and that way I can have it locally, and I'm not always running this uh, observable function to get the data back. I store that in rows, and we're going to be creating a new uh, array of arrays and replacing our observable once we've calculated the new values. So I call that new rows. All right, so we, we're going to loop through each individual column. We're going to grab the current row, which is the observable there. That's why it's a function, uh, because remember, uh, if you, I know I've done this a few times already, but this array of arrays is array of ko.observable, right? Like that. So you've got to, in order to get the value out of that, you've got to, for each individual one, actually call that observable function to get the value back. Uh, I also create three arrays here, previous row, uh, next row, and new row. Here's where uh, the running of those rules comes into play. The first thing we have to do is we have to determine for each cell space how many neighbors does that cell have that are al alive. So what I do is I check if your y is greater than zero, then I'm going to look at your previous row. And the reason it has to be greater than zero, so if your y is equal to zero, you don't have a previous row, right? So there's nothing you can compare against. So your y has got to be greater than zero to look at the previous row. So if it's greater than zero, uh, then I pull that previous row. And if it's less than the number of rows minus one, then I pull that next row and I store those. 
So number of rows here uh, would be three. The dot length would return um, three, right? So you've got to be less than two in order to actually have a number row, uh, a row after you. So that's why it's uh, rows minus one. So now we actually run that calculation. So we initialize the number of live neighbors to zero. And if our x is greater than zero, then we check the one before it, and we check the and then we check the one after it if we're not on the last x. So let me draw out uh, or write out rather, you know what our column or, or our row might look like. So these are your x values. Sorry, it starts at zero. So if your x is greater than zero, then check the value immediately before the current x. See, if you're at zero, you're on the first one. There's no value before you. But if you're one, then you want to see if the neighbor in front of you is alive and the neighbor after you is alive, right? So that's what that's doing. So you check your, your previous record. And if you're not on the last record, you check the one immediately after it. So if you're on five, you're only going to check four if it was alive. But if you're on four, you're going to check three and five. Now, if we have a previous row, then it'll run this same sort of calculation, right, but against the previous row. So, for instance, if you're doing row uh, zero, then your neighbors are going to be these two and then the one around it, right? Because the ones you're comparing is like this. If the record that you're looking at is here, then your neighbors are all of the rows or all of the cells that touch that row. So you want to build a full box around it to see if they're alive. So that's what we're doing here with previous rows. It's the exact same sort of logic. If you have a previous row, then check the one above it, check the one immediately above it, and then check the one next to it within the previous row. Same thing for next row. If you have a next row, then check the one uh, before it, below it, and immediately next to it. So the combination of all these checks actually checks every single neighbor available to the record to see if they're alive. That's the piece that I'm sure somebody who knows more about this could uh, could uh, you know write a little more efficiently. But that's what it does, and it does it pretty well. So. Now that we know how many neighbors are alive next to the current cell, we actually are going to run through uh, those rules, right? Any live cell with fewer than two neighbors dies. So our check here, if you're alive, your current row is one, and you have less than two neighbors, then you're going to die, which means we push a zero onto the new row that we're building. Any live cell with two or three neighbors lives. So if you're alive and you have two or three neighbors, then you live. I need a semicolon there. All right. Um, any live cell with more than three neighbors dies. So there's that rule. We'll push a zero. Any dead cell with exactly three neighbors uh, becomes a live cell. So here, if you're dead and you've got exactly three neighbors, then you become alive. We push a one onto our new row. Uh, otherwise, if none of those rules are true, then you're dead. We push a zero. So we built our new row, right? And we add that new row to our new rows. And then once we've done processing every single row, we replace our data with the new rows. So that's how we actually run through each individual cell and see if it should be alive or dead. Uh, the last thing that happens is here on the uh, after I've instantiated the model, I'd call window dot set timeout with that update function. I just use ten milliseconds. You could use zero, but I didn't want to kill the processor. So that's going to start the update call, and then at the end of the update function, it will call itself again after 10 milliseconds. So this update function is going to run in uh, infinitely. You know, it'll, it'll queue itself back up to run. So there you go. Uh, the game of life is running through.
And again, this is the first time I've written a game of life algorithm, but it looks like it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. And it looks pretty similar to any other game of life I've ever seen. Uh, again, it's super slow because we're using a knockout in a way that you really shouldn't be. But, uh, but hey, that was, that was pretty cool. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, you know, like and uh, share this uh, with your friends. Thanks.